so uh, this is a video of how to rebuild on your geyser analyzers. So when it gets shipped out to you, this is how it's going to look like. So let's go ahead and open it up. So here's your geyser. Dark Cronin Mods. So on your geyser, I'm gonna get two spare screws. Please do not lose your production number. It's a piece of paper on your packaging. Once you get your geyser, just unscrew the atomizer from the packaging. Or I can leave it on just to build on it. Let's open it up. There you go. So, one of the first things that you need to know about the geyser is that it has the airflow selection um, ring on the base. So, if the dot on the upper base is on the longest line, right there, that means that all on um, all the four air holes are open. If you put it in the second longest line, I'm gonna turn it up for you. there. That means that uh, three air holes are open. And if there's no build on it, you can actually see which air holes are open. In this case, there are air holes here, here, and here. The base will actually be numbered when you get it, and we will post a table um, so that it'll, ease, it'll be easier for you to figure out you know, which air holes are open. And if you put it on the shortest line, like that, then that means that two air holes are open. In this case, this air hole is open, and that air hole is open. Okay? So let's go ahead and rebuild. So what I'm going to do first is I'll go ahead and screw on the, the screw on the poles. Then uh, the easiest way to build your geyser is that you need to make sure that the length of your leads is just right about enough so that it can get to your pulse, but not too long that it may get in contact with your other coils or the opposite pulse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the leads just right about here.
like that long. And by the way, I'm using a, a twisted wire, a point twenty wire, uh, wrapped around a 2.5 millimeter screwdriver, um, six loops on each coil, and I'll build the quad coil today. Okay. So I'll do the same thing on the other coils. There. I'm going to show you the length of each coil. And that should be just about enough. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'll go ahead and insert each coil to each side of the pulse. And it's quite easy, you just you know plug it in just like that. Okay. So again that's uh, six loops on each side. So the next step that I'll, I'll do is I'll go ahead and screw these bad boys. So what I'm going to do is that if I'm going to screw this side right here, I'll need to hold two sides of the coils just to make sure that they're stable. like that. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Make sure to hold them. Tighten that down. I'll do on the do that on the same side or the other side. Finally, on the last side. There you go. All screwed up. Now, what I need to do next is make sure that my coils are neat, so I'll put in the screwdriver, make sure that it's lined up. Now, one very important thing to take note of is that you need to make sure that the coils does not touch the base, because of course, as you know, that will cause shortage on your coils and your bill. So I'll just do that same process on all the other sides.
there you go. So you have your quad coil onagonizer. Again, just make sure that your leads on your coils are not too long that they can get in contact with other coils or the other coils as well. All right. So once you're done with that, you can start with wicking it. All right. So right now, I'll, I'll use a uh, flattened cotton. Let me go ahead and cut it up. For more advanced vapors, what you can probably do is just you know, use one strand of cotton and use that for all the four coils that you have in your geyser. But what I'm going to do right now is I'll probably do two sides for every strand. trend Now, what you want to do is, you need to make sure that you have enough cotton to cover the base, like that. Do it on the same side. And you can cut in the ends of your cotton. So what it does is that if you have cotton on your base, once you screw the top cap on it, the whole base will act as your juice well. And that will you know, minimize the possibility of leaking through the air holes. That's it. So just put in your juice. Or one more thing to take note of is that um, there will be times where your build will be too close to the juice guide on the center. So you just need to make sure that you know you put a bit of distance on it. The Teflon can definitely take the heat from the coil, but there's a possibility that you can burn it when your coil is in direct contact with the Teflon or with the juice guide. 
So just make sure that, you know, it doesn't touch the juice guide at all. And that's it. Once you close your top cap on, make sure that you've selected the correct airflow settings. So in this case, since I built a, a quad coil, I'm gonna take it off. So I built a quad coil, let me remove it again. Right there. Since I built a quad coil, I'll put it right there. Tighten the top cap on, and I'm good to go. Uh, thank you for watching, and that's how you build your geyser. Thank you.